Hey everybody, I would like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. If you like the interviews we do with these terrific guests, give us a thumbs up and or subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel. We also release podcast gems on all podcast services out there or... Go to our main website, confreaksageeks.com, to not miss an episode. Today, I am speaking to an amazing individual I met at the Anime Los Angeles Convention Center uh, uh, convention last uh, earlier this year. They recently opened a business for fans of crafting and cosplayers by creating the supplies folks need to make incredible cosplays. I would like to welcome Amanda Mary Gregory, founder of First, uh, First Stop Cosplay. How are you doing today? doing well uh can't complain it's it's not pouring rain for once <laughs> i am oh yeah that's right you're in california did you get affected by any of the crazy snow or anything this like yesterday or this week um we didn't get snow um because we're we're down in southern california like we're based in irvine um we apparently two days ago it snowed outside for like 30 seconds but otherwise it's just been a ton of um rain like so much rain and then on the roads like accidents everywhere because everyone's like oh my goodness water is coming from the sky what does this mean how do i drive in this <laughs> it's like deer in the headlight situations it's like oh what is this yeah. water this this wetness that's coming out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, but hey, y'all need it though. I mean, y'all been it's been in the drought. Y'all been in drought for years, so this is yes, get as much yes as you can. <laughs> That's no help with wildfire season later. That is very very true because there are a lot of idiots out there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but but uh, Amanda, thank you for doing this. Really appreciate you mm -hmm. coming by. I really wanted to. Get, uh, I, when I saw y'all at uh, ALA, I was like, oh, this is tight. Uh, so, uh, so I wanted to talk more about it about what y'all do. So, uh, but why don't you say uh, like like uh, I just wanted to know how did first stop cosplay come uh, come to form? Um. So it's it's been a long winding road. Um. Because I, I originally went to uh, went to college for fashion design, and then graduated and realized I hated fashion design, so I went uh, back for co uh, costume design and then really got into costumes. And I've I've always been a huge nerd, like video games, manga, anime, all of that stuff. But suddenly, I knew how to make the their you know, costumes at the time, I didn't know it was called cosplay. I was like, oh, sweet. I can totally, you know, cosplay or, you know, make the costume for Haruhi Suzumiya. And then I found out that there was an actual term for it. Um, and um, like, as I got more and more involved in the cosplay community and doing more cosplays myself and, you know, making a lot of friends, I um, realized, or like I kept, coming across people who would tell me like I really want to cosplay but I don't know how or you know I can't afford to buy you know the pre-made ones um and uh not gonna lie part of me always felt a little guilty that I essentially ended up going to school <laughs> for making cosplay <laughs> um but I I try to help out whenever I could and um eventually I realized that what I really wanted to do with my life was to help people cosplay. And my first plan was to have um, a cosplay store that was like a one stop shop thing. Like you could, you know, like brick and mortar store, you could walk in and purchase part of a cosplay or the full thing like oh, wow. even like wig styling services all of that stuff you know and um um you know that was going to be called one stop cosplay it's like this is your one stop shop but um one year i helped one of my best friends make her first cosplay and um it was like the first time that i really got to see that process through somebody else's eyes um, sorry, I, no matter how many times I tell this story, I always tear up when I get oh. to this part. 
Um, but it, it was really eye opening for me to, to see how excited she got over doing these things that I took for granted. Um, it's like, oh, this is super easy. This like everyone knows how to do this. Right. And then she didn't know how to do it. And then when I showed her how to do it and she'd do it on her own and just how, how excited she got. And then, um, when we were in the hotel room at anime expo that year and she put the whole cosplay on for the first time and she looked at herself in the mirror um oh. and when she looked back at me just like the look on her face like was so happy um wow, and that's so, so proud <laughs> yeah. so Awesome. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The first question out the bat to make it so emotional. I'm so sorry, but I mean, but it's a great oh, no. story. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm an emotional person. I, I cry <laughs> all the time. <laughs> um, no. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that that's what made me realize that I wanted. I didn't want to sell people cosplays. I wanted to help them make it on their own. Mm. Um, and that the the real hurdle was not like people not wanting to put in the effort or not wanting to like go out and, you know, get the fabric and, you know, none of that stuff. It was more of a, you don't know what you don't know kind of thing. Um, it sounds like you like your, your, your more passion. I mean, your passion, more of it was teaching others how the world of like introducing them into the world of cosplay and empowering them to make their own stuff. And then the ha and allowing them to have the confidence to, you know, uh, to be able to get, uh, to, to make what they want and, and then get, and then show, and then be, be proud of it. Am, yeah. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, 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 cosplay doesn't just end when you finish making it you know it's I see it as like a journey you know that starts the moment you decide I want to make this cosplay and then it you know continues for as long as you wear it like it, you know every time you put it on you know there's just you get to become this other person for you know and until you take it off at the end of the day <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I mean, well, was there something that you just like? You're saying that you just didn't like fashion design. Like, what was it in fashion design that you weren't a fan? Like, I mean, was it just the culture, or was it just the the process of getting stuff done? Like, what was it? Um, it was boring. <laughs> um, because I I've always been pretty like theatrical in my own like clothing. You know, just that I wear every day, and um like that those were the kinds of things that i designed all through um uh college but one thing that they kept telling us was you know couture you're not gonna go into that you know very few people ever make it into couture those of you who love designing niche stuff you have to like make sure that there is a market for that niche stuff the vast majority of you are going to end up designing for companies like, you know, Forever 21 or H&M, where it's a, you know, or just, you know, other brick and mortar stores um, designing a whole bunch of t-shirts and stuff like that. And that I, I saw myself, I, I pictured myself doing that in the future and it, yeah, it, yeah. No, I definitely understand. Like I originally, like I originally wanted to be a video game programmer, and uh, back, I, yeah, I'm old school though. I'm like really old. So like, uh, so during the time they're like saying, "Oh, you got to do all these programming classes," because I wanted to make my own game. But then when you go, but then when you open up into reality, you realize it's not the odds for you to make your own game is very very slim what you probably do is you're going to probably end up going to work for someone else and then tell they're go, you're going to code for them and it's like yeah. that's not what yeah i don't want to code for them i want to code for me you know i want to do my own thing so i totally understand that level of freedom that you're that you're want that you're talking that you're wanting you know <laughs> um 
And uh, was there a moment in your like decision from pivoting on doing sewing tutor tutor tutorials? Because like you do uh, tutorials on YouTube and stuff. I've seen I've seen y'all's uh, YouTube page. Uh, like, was there like a time when you when you decided you know what? Let me uh, uh, I want to open up a full time business for people's cosplays needs and serve and resources. Like, was there like a point when you just decided this is where I was wanting to go? I guess you kind of answered it earlier, but <laughs> um. Yeah, I, that that was always kind of the the goal, mm -hmm. but um, we you know were incorporated um, mid uh, twenty nineteen, and um, yeah, that was uh, just in time for <laughs> the world to shut down. The perfect day, the perfect year, I guess. <laughs> yep, Jeez. absolutely, the perfect year to start a business. Um, <laughs> So, and, and back then it was just me and, um, you know, my marketing director, Kelly, who will, you know, hopefully be able to join us <laughs> for at least a bit. Um, but yeah, until almost halfway through 2021, it was just the two of us. And we, you know, during all the lockdown orders, you know, the, all the stay at home orders and stuff, we were a hundred and over a hundred miles apart. So we decided just focus on social media, you know, on Instagram, YouTube, stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that was fun. So, mm -hmm. so much fun to, to film remotely. Um, oh. Cause she, she'd do the filming and the editing, but then the cameras would be set up at my place and they would be connected to my computer. So then I would get, grant her remote access to my computer so that she could remotely control the cameras from my computer. <laughs> that is crazy. That is a crazy setup. <laughs> wow. It, it, was, it was interesting. Very, very interesting times. Oh my goodness. Oh geez. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you don't have to deal with that anymore. Are y'all at least closer or is, or is y'all still like a hundred miles away from each other, like. Um, we're we're all in an office now. Um, okay. Early 2021, we did get an office space um, here in Irvine, and um, there are 16 of us now. 16. Wow. Yep. So we do all the the filming, all of the you know writing, all the patterning, um, production, order fulfillment, all of that stuff we do. Like, right here well not here out yeah outside of my <laughs> office <laughs> out in the main in the main office do you still uh so do you still do youtube tutorials and stuff or is uh when you're saying the filming uh is that what you're filming or like what kind of things are you filming um we still do youtube um tutorials we're hoping to expand that you know and pay more attention to youtube this year Currently, it's more Instagram, and then we're we've been starting to get into TikTok. But the vast majority of our filming is for our instructional content that comes with our sewing patterns. So it's it's a a lot of filming, a mm. lot of editing. We um, um, we film the entire project for a sewing pattern, like start to finish, so that people can watch the uh videos of us making the same thing that they are making rather than just like here's some instructions have fun <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh and uh i mean you know a thing or two when it comes to sewing and uh, and, and cosplay uh how long you, how long yourself how long have you been in the cosplay scene um officially since 2007 um unofficially in since 2005 oh, wow. I dressed up as Yuna from Final Fantasy um, 10 mm -hmm. for Halloween but you know I didn't know how to sew you know I was I was a junior in high school my mom um, you know she made it and uh, <laughs> yeah but my my first official cosplay was 2007 at anime Expo Wow what, what, so what was your what was your 2007 cosplay that you did? yourself um it was haruhi suzumiya but her extravaganza version with you know, it's um from like pro, uh like 
promo photos and stuff. Oh, okay. So it's it was uh, it was a lot of fun at the time, but a few years later, I decided to remake it to to kind of. <laughs> with yeah. your new with your new skills and stuff and like uh like the upgrade it's like this is this is the one i started with this is me 2020 something and then you're just yeah. uh, killing it oh yeah. how do you how is there no photos of this <laughs> like at all um there there are photos of it out there i i believe there is a post on instagram because mm -hmm. we we've done a few like then and now posts for mm -hmm. those of us in the in the office who cosplay of like here was our first cosplay and then here's one of our later cosplays and um as much as i would love to just bury those photos of that first cosplay um i do leave them out there <laughs> in the world <laughs> as kind of a way to show people, you know, because people, a lot of times they'll tell me like, oh, you've been so great from the, you know, from the very beginning. And it's like, okay, I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm not bad. I'm okay. But mm -hmm. I, I had, I, I did have to learn. <laughs> it was a learning <laughs> curve. So. Yes. Well, like, it's kind of funny, but then to be, to, to play devil's advocate, like 2005 cosplaying, it was you had to make you had to create things to make things work because they didn't have like you can't go to joanne's fabric and you go into the cosplay section and stuff like that or or you know or use foam or any of that stuff that didn't exist you had to be like oh i have to make this but i don't know but and you had to figure it out so you had to be more crafty on figuring that out to what it is today so yeah. you gotta I give yourself a little bit of credit yeah i i also picked all the wrong fabrics <laughs> and uh, I had some fit issues. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's a story. But that, though, that's a story of cosplayers' lives, like in the mid like two thousand to two thousand ten, though. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's fair. <laughs> you shouldn't knock yourself off. Not knock yourself on having a bad cosplay back then, because in my in my opinion, everybody had a bad cosplay back then. <laughs> but, yeah, and <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I had a blast wearing it. Mm -hmm. back then you know and that that's what i focus on the most is, is like yeah i might look at those photos now and cringe but i have some amazing memories yeah. of you know, wearing that cosplay what was uh ax your first convention it was um and uh it it was a big blur <laughs> <laughs> i remember walking through the front doors of you know the convention center you know it was the last year i was at long beach mm -hmm. and i actually stopped right in the middle of the of the door of the doorway and like blocked all of these people and i was just staring all around me and um one of my friends from school was with me and you know she was very accustomed to my strange ways but i just suddenly blurted out these are my people I have, I have come home. <laughs> <laughs> the natural start of a weave, uh, uh, just a natural start of a weave. That's what, that's nice. <laughs> that is great. You know, I'm, it's funny to think when you're saying when you're saying Long Beach because like my first time going to AX was uh, 2010, I believe. Mm -hmm. So so I guess that was the first couple of years since when they moved to LA or downtown. Yeah. Oh yeah, but just to think that that convention was at that convention center at the Long Beach Convention Center is it's quite interesting to me. Yeah, everything <laughs> was spread out. Um, I and I am very much directionally challenged. Mm -hmm, I got lost too. so many times trying to find <laughs> panels, and uh, yeah, the only thing I found without any problem was the exhibit hall. Cause, yeah. Know, I mean, it's, it sticks out, <laughs> but Long, <laughs> Long Beach is a weird convention center, though. Like, I, <laughs> yeah, I've only been there like a couple of times, but you're like their like their panel rooms are downstairs at a very low low level, and then yeah. there's some on the up, yeah, and, it, and they're not like le they're not stacked, they're like this. <laughs> it's like <laughs> what? It's like oh no, it's like oh how you get to the room one twelve. Oh, you have to go to the opposite side where the aquarium exit is, and then you have to yeah. take that one elevator shaft that no one knows about to go down there. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I totally understand. 
that was a uh, that was a challenging one too. Uh, what other cosplays have you made, like uh, b- uh, besides Haru- Haruhi Suzumiya? Um, I've done Noel Vermillion from Blaze Blue Chrono Phantasma. Mm-hmm. Um, Sinon from Sword Art Online, her Cat Sith version hmm. from um, uh, the ALO arc. Oh. I'm totally blanking on the name of that arc, but. Yeah, <laughs> um, Black Rock Shooter. I've done um, Hatsune Miku a few times. Mm-hmm. Uh, Freya from Chobits. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, Flex. Oh yeah, yeah, Chobits. You know, kills my age right there. <laughs> with, with Clamp and all that, yeah. <laughs> nice. Man, you just yeah, you, you, yeah. So you, yeah, you definitely did. Uh, do. You, do you still do it? I mean, if you even have time, like, do you ever go to a convention and try to cosplay now, or do you just don't have the time as much? Um, now I don't really have the time. Um, I ALA was actually the first time since 2019 that I've gotten to cosplay, and um. Yeah, we we were. I don't normally go to the the conventions because I have to be here for you know whatever mm-hmm. people need me to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but because we were you know one of the sponsors for ALA, I wanted to to be there to really you know make sure that everything went smoothly and be there you know if anyone needed like mm-hmm. a big decision made you know rather rather than you know calling me or messaging the office or something. It's like, hey, well, I'm already here. <laughs> I can make the decision right now. Um, but yeah, I uh, as, as soon as people started talking about how we should um, you know, showcase our cosplays at ALA, I was immediately like, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll cosplay. I'll, I'll buy the wigs myself. I'll, I'll you know, work over the holiday break because we, we got a week we took a week mm-hmm. at the end of the, the year to just recover <laughs> I can't um, imagine. but yeah I, I was like me me <laughs> what, what did you cosplay as? yeah what did you cosplay as in ALA were you uh one of your co- one of the cosplays that you did or that y'all created um I I did I wore bloom um which is you know she she's one of our licensed sewing patterns and then i also spent a couple days walking around as um pan who's uh she's one of our like characters for the company that we you know use for um like promotional materials and for like first stop cosplay original patterns Mm -hmm. um you know we use artwork of her and the at ala there were you know these giant columns right outside the exhibit hall and we had column wraps up there and you know she was up there with you know some of our other characters and our, our panda mascot so <laughs> that's yeah, awesome that, yeah that was fun <laughs> yeah, that, that's really cool that's cool and uh finding like finding specific patterns for cosplays can be daunting when find like you know finding them at a store or at a mm-hmm. uh, or at a fabric store itself like what is it that makes like first stop cosplay different from the competitors um i i love answering this question (laughs) because um i i have always avoided like commercial sewing patterns like the plague i Mm. would rather make my own sewing patterns um you know and spend like a couple weeks doing that because you know commercial sewing patterns like traditionally they come with multiple sizes and they're all stacked on top of each other so you have to figure out like which line do I cut and they're printed on tissue paper which you know you look at it and it tears itself um and the instructions are you know I'm I'm more of a visual learner and also like do it myself kind of learner so yeah um oh, okay. we we try to do what like the complete opposite of all of that. So like rather than doing like a dark elf sewing pattern, it's like, no, we're going to have a character specific 
sewing pattern, you know, which is where the licensing comes in. So we, you know, do work with, with licensors. Um, but then we also have um, uh, the First Off Cosplay Originals line, which consists of designs that are, can be easily adapted to any cosplay that we don't carry. Like, for example, we have a pleated skirt sewing pattern and pleated skirts show up in cosplay all the time. You know, like schoolgirl uh, uniforms, for example, all of that stuff. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But we try to make the patterns as user friendly as possible. And so we have you know, like size inclusivity is really important. We have three different size charts with 14 sizes each. Um, and the and because of that, we sell a single size. So instead of getting a sewing pattern on it that has like four sizes stacked on top of each other, you order one size and that's what comes. And you have one line that you have to cut the patterns out on. Um, and we also, like all of our sewing patterns come with a ton of instructional content. So like step-by-step -step video tutorials, and we, we actually don't use industrial sewing machines here. We use home sewing machines so that mm -hmm. um, people, you know, like when you watch these video tutorials, you see sewing machines similar to what you'll be working with at home. Um, but then also for people who prefer written instructions, we have, you know, very detailed written instructions and um, also a customer exclusive Discord server so people can you know interact with other customers who made the same patterns that they're working on or you know who might be able to give them advice or you know if two people are working on the same pattern at the same time they can you know help problem solve but also it's um moderated by first stop cosplay employees so That's it's cool. a direct line of communication to us like if there's anything missing from our instructional content then people can hit us up and be like, "Hey, I I have a question. <laughs> can you so help you have, me?" So you have direct. So people have direct like customer service. Like can get customer service directly from from the uh from y'all through yep. through through Discord itself. That's pretty cool. I guess uh, the one thing because I'm not I'm not a sewer myself, but mm -hmm. you're saying the one like it comes with one pattern itself or one uh one one pattern itself. So does that is that like a one size fits all kind of situation or because like. Um is it like, like what what why is that better than uh than having different uh different patterns different size patterns so, so when you have multiple sizes that come on like with a sewing pattern it's like you'll have one pattern piece which is like one part of the cosplay like one part you know like say a, a sleeve mm -hmm. um you won't have just one sleeve pattern, there'll be four of different sizes all stacked on top of each other. And some of the lines, you know, intersect, some of them are the same. And you have to like figure out like, where, where do I cut? What do I do? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Where's, oh, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly's able to join. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, but yeah, you order, you know, one size. So all of the sewing patterns that um, you get in the package are just that one size. So there's no guesswork as to, you know, where do you cut, which patterns do you use? It's like everything on those um, pages, mm -hmm. that's exactly what you need. Okay, that okay, that's cool. That makes that makes sense. So, ba yeah. So basically, when you're saying that, so I'm just trying to make sure I got this right. So, if the size uh, with the size pattern with multiple size patterns, it's not necessarily the same. The uh, uh, the cuts are, are going to be obviously different, but mm -hmm. uh, with one, you'll have the same kind of cut uh, for e for uh, depend even even if depending on whatever size that you have, but you know where the cut's going to be at, uh, or, or, or rationally or. Well, at least, yeah, yeah, at least like right, like <laughs> literally. I don't know. I'm trying to make sure I'm getting that right, but uh, that's cool. Hello, uh, hi, uh, hi, hi, Kelly. How are you doing? Hello, I'm good. Yes, um, like uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, can you uh, uh, get your name and also like what you do as well? Like what, oh, what you are? Um, 
My name is Kelly Willie. I am the <laughs> marketing director slash video lead person. <laughs> you just have so many I hats. Huh? You have many hats. That's what you're yeah. trying to do. <laughs> Yeah, That's... so I'm in charge of all of the social media and um, all of the convention stuff mm. and also overlook all the video tutorials that we do and uh, filming for the patterns. Our pattern paper. Oh, yeah, our pattern paper. Yeah. We love our pattern paper. It's, What's uh... the pat Is your pattern paper more like it's not as flimsy or? or... Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, tracing paper, mm -hmm. basically. Um, so it's a lot yeah. thicker and it's more durable. Yeah, and, um, but it's also safe for fabric shears because mm -hmm. the fabric shears normally, you know, fabric shears for fabric only. You know, mm -hmm. if you use them to cut on paper, it dulls them really quickly. But we did so many tests. <laughs> um, and trace, the tracing paper is safe for fabric shear. So you can just take our sewing patterns, pin them directly to your fabric, and then cut the sewing patterns out through the paper. Um, oh, okay. We, yeah, we, we really like it. Everyone that at the office, they're like a huge fan. <laughs> Did you get any, like, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, feedback itself like uh like I, I guess like i said i'm not really a sewer itself <laughs> like did you like did you get like uh feedback from other people suggesting to go that route or was this something that that you knew since you knew since y'all since you know how to sew and stuff that that you would prefer and you think people would like it uh, like it more it was kind of a mix of both <clears throat> um we knew that we wanted different paper but then we last last year we did a round of beta testing because we're always doing research trying to get feedback from our followers on social media we're always doing market research um we use our you know friends family members non-sewers here in the office as guinea pigs mm -hmm. all the time to test <laughs> things out but um you know, yeah beta testing was kind of our chance to really put things to the test of like how are we on the right track? Um, is what we're doing gonna work? <laughs> yeah, and and you were you were a lot more involved in that than yeah I was. Um, yeah, we had yeah. people take a a survey, and then from there we were like, okay, they would be good, they would be good, they would be good. These are beginners. These are more experienced people, so they can give opinions mm -hmm. since they already know how to sew and they've dealt with patterns and all that jazz so they could give their feedback yeah okay cool and oh overall, people like the paper right yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got yeah. a lot of good feedback on the paper yep some things oh. people were a little indifferent about but mm -hmm. the paper it was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that was the number one that needs to be changed <laughs> right yeah. and uh uh, find, uh, and also, uh, you like your first stop cosplay YouTube page is very informative regarding like sewing and making things, uh, itself. Um, uh, have you done several, so, uh, and you've done, y'all do, y'all have done several sewing, sewing machine reviews. Um, is there a machine that you would recommend for a beginner, interme uh, intermediate and expert level? Uh, that's, that's a very, uh contentious question yeah yes. <laughs> i know i know <laughs> yeah. okay you know instead of just trying to split it into uh three like is there like is there one that 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 that, that stood out that you all would say your favorite that would be your like one of your favorite mm -hmm. i love my sewing machine <laughs> it's a singer it um basically what what i love about it the most is it has this thing called the uh, auto tension, mm -hmm. which is how tightly the sewing machine um, holds mm -hmm. the thread. Yeah. Um, but you need to change the tension based on like what kind of fabric you're sewing. And my sewing machine has auto tension, so it automatically changes for you. Oh, wow. And I love that. 
so much. I refuse to use any other sewing machine. <laughs> <laughs> so would you would it be safe to say maybe it's a, a, any machine that has auto tension would be like already like have a leg up for many of the other ones that are out there? Uh, for me, but <laughs> I, I know Kelly has different opinions. Yeah, because I haven't really sewn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm one of the people that they use as guinea pigs mm -hmm. <laughs> because. Even though I've been around sewing for a long time because of Amanda, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've helped her with her cosplays and whatnot. Yep. Uh, um, I so you, don't know how to do it myself. <laughs> so you probably would say like, uh, if if someone gives you a machine, you'll be like, I'll I'll make it work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's fair. Because I just don't really know any. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I'd say for. For beginners, price is probably the most important thing because, you know, you're not going to want to go out and buy like an $800 sewing machine because you don't know anything about sewing machines. Um, but I would say that, or I, I would recommend that people not get a sewing machine, you know, under a hundred and fifty dollars yeah because anything lower than that and the sewing machine is you know likely not going to last a very long time um but like once you get to the more intermediate and expert levels like you know what you like you know what you're looking for and what you want out of a sewing machine so then it becomes a little bit less about price and more about which sewing machine is going to give me what I want? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well. That's that's fair. That's good. And um and incredibly, like you were saying earlier, I mean, you got the official licenses to uh, make pattern uh, pattern kits from popular video game, the popular video game Persona Five, and the cartoon series Winx Club. Um, like, how was your experience just trying to get just getting the licenses for for that? I mean, the, like Persona was. <laughs> I like I've experienced some with Atlas already, and I and it, it it was nightmare. So I would love to know what your experience <laughs> was. With, with, with we, that. we actually love Atlas. They they've been great. Although, no, I mean I love the, Atlas too. I'm not throwing any kind of shade. No, 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 but. no, no, no. yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the approval process. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been it's been interesting because um, li licensors have been very interested, like. In 2020, we went to uh, licensing expo virtually, mm -hmm. um, and I was fully prepared to spend the next two to three years convincing all of these companies to just give us the time of day. But we ended up having meetings all day, <laughs> all day for how many days was it? Four? Three? Wow. I think it was three. That yeah. one was three days. Okay. Yeah. Like, and everybody we talked to was like super on board. They were super excited. We, so when do you guys want to get started? Yeah. Like, like that is a good question. We don't have an office. <laughs> it's only me and her. We don't have yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. um, oh we, my we, God. We use a lot of people. A lot. We, some people like knew exactly what we were talking about and they're like, oh my God, we are going to make this work. This is going to happen. And then other people were, were like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I am intrigued. <laughs> Let's talk more. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and Atlas actually reached out to us on the last day of licensing expo. It, it was what, like half an hour before yeah. it ended. Yeah. It was wow. half an hour. Um, and, and we had just gotten off a call with Sega. Um, and we, we'd asked, like, should, should we reach out to Atlas? Cause you know, Atlas is, is, is a subsidiary of Sega. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, re reach out to them. And then as soon as the call ended, we had a message from Atlas mm -hmm. <laughs> being Holy like, crap. oh my God, I'm so yeah. sorry. It's so late. Do you guys have time to hop on a call? Um, and uh, <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, I, th I think we've got time. <laughs> totally think we've got time. And um, she, she asked us if we would be interested in Persona. <laughs> and uh, inside we were like, oh my God! But like, <laughs> we just have to be like, yeah, that yeah. sounds really 
good. Yeah, that, that book sounds great. You know, I, I totally would not sell my firstborn child to get persona. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, after the call ended, we, we were freaking out just yeah. a little bit. Uh, <laughs> was it like... Call. Yeah, was it like the process to get it? Was it like like how uh, was it a long was it long or was it just kind of like that like you know short a short period to get to get a license like that? Um, first, what what took a lot of time is, <clears throat> is we had to get to the point where we were um, able to start making sewing patterns, you know, to <clears throat> make use of these licenses. And I don't I don't know how long. The, the process usually is, but it has been very interesting because um, we're very unique as licensees. You know, we, we have a very different production process. So um, licensors have had to kind of adapt to, you know, their approval process and, you know, Thankfully, you know, all all of them have been very open about that from the very beginning of like, we have nothing in place to work with a company like you guys. So it's going to be making things up as we go and figuring things out. <laughs> but everyone's been really great, um, like really, really excited to, to work with us. Well, that sounds very actually that sounds very uh, like positive though because that means that no one else has thought of it thought of doing what y'all are trying to do you know so yeah i mean you're making something oh i'm sorry um the licensing industry is a lot uh at at least on the video game and anime part of it Mm -hmm. uh it's been a lot more welcoming than we initially thought yeah (laughs) yeah that I mean, yeah, it's actually surprising that the anime wouldn't have something like that in stock, especially when you think that you see the like people cosplaying for forever now that they'd be like, oh, you know, <laughs> it's like, like yeah. why don't we get an official something uh, uh, or the other to do it? That That's cool. I'll- it is coming. <laughs> 2023. I can 100 percent tell you that. Okay, it's coming 2020. It's coming this year. <laughs> um, as, as well as um, we 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 may we we may be possibly definitely kind of sort of talking with other licensors. Mm. Oh, so you, you may possibly definitely <laughs> want to stay tuned for those announcements. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be awesome yeah i'm looking forward to that and uh uh and also like uh like overall just making accessible pattern kits for cosplayers is just a great idea um like what's first stop cosplay's like ultimate goal uh you want to achieve providing cosplayers like you know their potentials the, their potential tools there are many yeah. so many <laughs> um mm-hmm. i you know and and the the difficult thing about you know doing something so new is that you know constantly things come up that make us realize that we have to pivot or sometimes it's like darn it that's not going to be possible but one thing that we really really would like to do is some kind of customization for sizes Mm because even with our you know wide range of sizes um there are still people that kind of fall in between them um so anything that we can figure out to to increase the sizing that we can offer would be you know is like i want to do that so badly (laughs) because anybody should be able to cosplay if they want to um, but yeah, licensed fabric is another thing that I would really want to do. <laughs> licensed fabric would be awesome. Well, wait, that, are we talking about like a, like, uh, you know, are you talking about like a fabric that was specifically made by y'all that's, that's specifically licensed through y'all? Um, or like fa- fabric specifically made by us and that would, you know, also be licensed like you know for example um protagonist pants 
persona mm. persona fabric for the exact um, plaid that they use for protagonist pants for a school uniform, you know, stuff like oh, that. Man. So that, that's I, cool. I really want to get a fabric printer. <laughs> i think you i think you may have a justifiable reason to get that, to get said fabric printer now you know <laughs> we, we just need uh, to, to find the space and, and yeah. the, the additional funding <laughs> how, how big how big is a fabric printer the, the kind that we would need is an industrial one um yeah it's pre pretty big <laughs> pretty pretty big <laughs> I think Just, like 70 or 80 inches it, oh we would gosh. um um I did some math and last year and it we would have needed to uh, give up our entire conference room Holy for <laughs> um to do like our own fabric but yeah I that's wait for exp yeah. yeah. Maybe wait for expansion, and then they'll be like, "Okay, I have, yeah, there we go." <laughs> yeah. You know. All right. Final. My final question is: uh, Is there an anime or video game series or anything like cartoon, anything uh, that you would want to pursue to make patterns for, uh, uh, for it, like li like what you're doing now? Vocaloid. Vocaloid. Uh, uh, that would be that would be really cool. For me, yeah. For me, <laughs> for, me for anime, it'd probably be One Piece. Mm. Oh, One Piece. And for video games, oh, probably no. either Kingdom Hearts or Final Fantasy fourteen. <gasps> oh, oh, I didn't think about video games. <laughs> it's not too late. You can still think of one. Final Fantasy nine. Oh, I love nine. Oh. <laughs> now it's one of my favorite ones. Got more points. Oh. <laughs> I, I love Final Fantasy. Yeah, nine. I was um, um last year because I uh I wanted to play it again, and I was like, my friend said, "Hey, you should you should just go stream it," and then I uh, I did, and so I was like, you know what, that's a good idea. So I did, but then decided to do all of it, and mm. uh, I after I was going to my playthrough, I'm like, this game is like on a PlayStation one, it still holds up as one of my favorite final fantasies. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think as, as much as I really want Vocaloid mm -hmm. and, you know, also one piece, I love mm -hmm. him. He is my God. Um, <laughs> you know, really like everything we do is, you know, for our customers. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what we want. It's more like, what do our customers want? What what can we get for them? Yeah. Um, to be fair, I wasn't asking the customers. I was asking y'all too. <laughs> 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 okay, I, I was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine being greedy. You need to get a little bit something for yourself. That's perfectly <laughs> fine with me. Oh, but that is great. And um, uh, and Amanda, uh, Amanda, could you uh, like to plug in, like, where can folks find you? Where can folks purchase your stuff? Like, uh, this is the best, uh, the best place to reach to reach y'all uh, to reach y'all at uh, for first cos, uh, first stop cosplay. Um, Firststopcosplay dot com is the easiest place um, to to find us and purchase any of our products. Um, then we've also got. You know, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and All first stop cosplay. Yep. Except yeah. Twitter is first one ST stop cosplay. First one ST? Okay. You know, I'll. I'll... Um, and we're going to Anime Impulse San Diego. We're going to WonderCon. We oh, are wow. going to AnyFest. And we are also going to Fangia wow. in San Diego. Wow. WonderCon's like in two weeks, isn't it? It's really it's getting up there. Wonder, yeah, WonderCon is, oh, God, is it in two weeks? No, three weeks. Yeah. Anime okay. Impulse is in two weeks. <laughs> oh, wait, there's another Anime Impulse? I thought there was an in Impulse San after. Diego. Oh, okay. That's at the Del Mar programs. 
is it going to be exclusive or is it a, is it is it a part of the Asian festival like they usually it's like usually part do? of yeah it's part of another festival. Oh, okay, that's cool. I didn't know they did that. I didn't know they expanded like that. That's that's great. <laughs> but uh, man, that is so that's so cool to see. I just can't. I just hope that y'all uh uh will I'll get to see you again. Well, I probably won't be able to go to another anime convention until next year because I'm going to be traveling too. But uh, if if I do get if I do stop uh swing by and I see y'all, I will say hi hi again. But uh, uh Amanda uh Amanda and uh and uh I'm sorry, I cannot remember. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for uh thank you so much for stopping by and thank you for sharing. Uh and folks, y'all need to go check out these amazing folks at their uh, at their website firststopcosplay.com. They uh, like they have some really cool stuff, their patterns and stuff. Uh wait until Persona. I sure as hell can't, uh, am waiting for Persona uh, Persona cuz my friends go <laughs> One, one thing that, that is coming out that we're really excited for and we're actually taking pre-orders, or I guess mm -hmm. two things, is Stella from Winx Club. Mm -hmm. um, oh, okay. When are, when is WonderCon? 23rd, well, it's on the 24th. This month, this month yeah. she, she will anime be Impulse. anime impulse. Okay, yeah. yeah. Don't don't come to me for dates. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Stella, Stella, Stella will be released mm -hmm. this month in March. And um, in in the works, we you know, and available for pre-order, we have a made outfit mm -hmm. for female and male, our our women's and men's size charts. Yep. So oh, that's awesome. Yep. And Man. down for that. <laughs> Definitely check that. that's awesome well uh, yes uh kelly amanda thank you so much for stopping by and i've got guys once again folks if you've loved this interview uh you could also check out all the other interviews that we've done in the past on any podcast services out there like on spotify apple or google Cos uh cosplay google podcast <laughs> uh, or you could go to our main website confreaksandgeeks.com to check out everything that we do each uh, uh, all day every day so uh once again guys this is davis signing off off y'all take it easy and